guys. Welcome to tonight's episode of the LGBTQ Voice. My name is Tracy Welch and I'll be hosting tonight. Um, before we start the show, there's a few things in our community that's been going on, or that is going on, and today is the 40th anniversary of the assass excuse me, assassination of Harvey Milk. So I wanted to make sure um, up on the screen right now is something I posted on Facebook that you guys can read. Um, Harvey Milk thought it was important for people to see him in a political role, that folks would at least know one gay person and maybe make a different choice and decision for, for gay rights going back. And again, it was 40 years ago. I want to make sure that we give a shout out to Harvey Milk, and I love this thing on the screen that you see, it says, hope will never be silent. Um, so it's amazing, and again, when, when he was assassinated, um, the mayor was assassinated as well, so I do not want to forget the, the mayor of San Francisco. Um, he was a supporter of Harvey Milk, and the person's job that Harvey Milk got, um, Dan White is the one who um, did the assassination of both of them. Um, but I wanted to, again, say that Harvey Milk was the first openly gay elected official in the United States, and today is the 40th anniversary of his assassination. And AJ is going to put a video up for you. As president of the Board of Supervisors, it's my duty to make this announcement. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The suspect is Supervisor Dan White. Somebody said he's, he's gay. I thought, holy Christ, how are we going to go back to our union and go back to where we work and tell guys that we supported a fruit? You could hear where he was coming from. He was coming from uh, people positions. He wasn't only for gay rights. He was for gay rights uh, because that is a minority. And we're back. Thanks, guys. Uh, I just thought it was important to share that, um, as, as well as as a, a movie uh, with Sean Penn. We weren't able to kind of show you guys a trailer on that. We're not allowed to post certain things. But if you get a chance, take, please take a look at the movie, uh, Harvey Stonewall. And um, sorry, guys, you know me. I'm trying to figure out how to get your comments. So at any time throughout the night, uh, here we go. Uh, I did it again this, this week. I tried not to do that. Um, get a chance to see the video, please do so. Um, I want to let you guys know a couple of things that are going on. December 1st is National AIDS Day, or excuse me, World's, World AIDS Day. So rock the ribbon, U equals U is happening. Um, undetectable equals untransmittable. At 5.30 at New Bedford City Hall, there's an open ceremony. Um, there is a candlelight vigil. So the procession um, to Pilgrim United Church of Christ at 6.30, the reception um, with, light, with light each at the soup kitchen on 634 Purchase Street. 7 p.m., they have a program, a keynote speaker, and a spe special performance by Austin. And again, a candlelight memorial. So uh, December 1st is World's A Day, and that's what um, the folks are going to be doing here in New Bedford. I know um, Providence City Hall is doing a, um, an event there as well. So you guys can kind of take a look at Facebook, see what events are going on out there. I was asked to talk about this site as well. December 13th, Thursday at 6 o'clock. It's Holidays Are a Drag. It's actually a drag show and performance at New Bedford Art Museum, and you can find that on Facebook as well. Um, a couple other things going on real quick. Eileen and I were actually in, interviewed yesterday for South Coast Matters uh, TV show. So um, when that comes out, we'll actually share it on the LGBTQ Voice, probably the South Coast LGBTQ Network page, so you can find it there. On another note today, I actually had a great lunch with David Velasquez, excuse me, Velasquez uh, Bermudez and Bob Isidore. I probably said Velasco is his middle name, pardon me. Uh, David was one of the Stonewall veterans, and um, well, some of the survivors are left. There's only eight to ten maybe left right now, and I had a great lunch with them. Um, and we're working on doing a, um, an event coming up because this is the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. So if you guys want us to be at your events, if you want us to talk at your school, you want more information about any LGBTQ issues or concerns you have, you can hit up Eileen and myself are the co-hosts and producers of the show. Um, Eileen at sclgbtk.org or myself, Tracy, at sclgbtk.org. 
www.ghostbusinessclub.org. So um, I guess that's all like the, t the tidbits I have. I want to make sure we got um, all that taken care of and, and in. So tonight's show is on CPR. And it's about, you know, hands-on CPR. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the AED, if I say that right. Um, but I want to introduce you to our guest, Hillary Green from the Red Cross. She's been on our show before. She was here with uh, Susie Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, excuse me, I was going to say her name wrong. Um, but Susie and Hillary were here talking about um, how to handle emergency situations that was, yeah. that's going on in the community. So we thought how cool would it be to have you guys come back on the show and do a little bit of um, demonstration. So we also have another special guest over here. It's No Breathy Stevie. <laughs> so no, no Breathy Stevie has his own seat tonight. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I know he's a silent partner in this program. He's going to collapse soon. Yep. Uh, but we thought how cute it would be to have um, No Breathy Stevie <laughs> as a guest. Because you guys know I have to have fun in my day and pride in my day. And the rest is what it is. Um, so before we start, I wanted to guys give you guys some, some statistics that we kind of looked up. It's, it's amazing that when people do nothing, people die. You could, you know, we think about CPI years ago that you have to give um, mouth to mouth. And the, the, the hands only CPR is just trying to keep somebody alive until help gets there. Um, so in one year alone, 475,000 Americans die from cardiac arrest. More than 350,000 cardiac arrests occur outside of hospitals. Um, CPR administered immediately after cardiac arrest can double or triple a person's chance of survival. About 90% of people who experience out-of-hospital cardiac arrest die. 45% of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest victims survived when bystander CPR was administered. So that means 55% did not, 55%. Uh, majority of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests occur in public settings, 39.5%. Uh, 275 were at homes or residences, and 18.2% were at nursing homes. Unfortunately, only about 46% who experience out-of-hospital cardiac arrest get the immediate help they need before professional help arrives. In 2017, among the 356,000 out-of-hospital um, cardiac arrests that occurred, 45.7% received bystander CPR. There are about 10,000 cardiac arrests in the workplace each year in the United States. Did you know only 50% of the people can locate an automated external defibrillator? It's the AED at work. When I was looking at these statistics, I'm like, wow, I work at a job and I'm dying, and nobody knows where that machine is to help me. So we're going to talk a little bit about the um, EAD today, and we're going to talk about the hands-on CPR. Hillary um, is trained to talk about that, but um, to get more training for the full, I don't say the full CPR, um, the, the breathing part of it, what do you guys call that? Yeah, uh, it's a, a certi fully certified. Fully certified class. Yeah, uh, and, so, and some positions do. I was I, um, being a foster parent. I was trained, mm -hmm. um, and then working with the individuals. Um, right. In the public, I was trained on how to do. The, the yeah, that's interesting care. to me that as a foster parent, you were trained. You had to take that training, yeah. you know, to make sure your child's safe. And if you're not a foster parent, or not, you probably don't go through it, but yeah. it's still needed. And I, I know during our during our research and whatnot, we talked about that. I mean, even even pet CPR. I yes. see on Facebook all the time. If he's got a pet, if he's got a pet, well, I bet you if your your pet was dying, you would try something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In you fact, uh, we have a, a free mobile app for pet first aid and pet first aid because it pet has. and adult well. In yeah. No, they're different. So <laughs> pet first aid is yeah. different than adult. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It so, so what do I do? I just go to the App Store, and how does that work? Yep, it's all free, so you can just put in, go to the, the App Store or whatever it is on, um, whatever, however you get your apps, and you put in Red Cross, and there's the Emergency app, the First Aid app, the Pet First Aid app, the Blood Donor app. There are a whole bunch, and they're all free, <coughs> and it's so it can live with you. Um, even let's say you take one of our certification classes and you're certified for two years, but it's 18 months in your certification, and all of a sudden you're faced with an emergency, you might be like, how do I do that? And you can go right to the app. So we're trying to make it as easy and as accessible as possible. Even though we're a really old organization since 1881, we have some really modern technology. Well, you know, we, we joked offline, we were, t we were talking about, you know, if your car's broken, mm -hmm. you actually try and say, well, what is it? You know, you, you check your t the air and tire, if it says, hey, I, I have a tire that's low. 
you go out and look. You know, you may open up the hood and take a look under the hood, and then you call AAA. You know, right. we're going to do this demonstration about the CPR and how there's each step that goes with it, or a CPR, but hands-on CPR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was CPR, um, yeah. But it, it, it amazes me that people, and again, not knowing what people are at today, put, touching someone's mouth to mouth, you know, mm -hmm. so, but you can still do those compressions. Um, so I know AJ is going to put up a video for us. It's actually a two plus minute video of how to do it. And then we're gonna demonstrate on our, our No Breathing Stevie here. How to perform hands-only CPR. Cardiac emergencies can happen anywhere. Be prepared with a simple technique known as hands-only CPR. You can learn it in minutes, it's easy to remember, and it can help save a life. You will need the willingness to act and a few simple skills. Whenever possible, use disposable gloves when providing emergency care. Step one, if you see someone suddenly collapse, Check the scene for safety and then see if the person responds to you by tapping them on the shoulder and shouting, are you okay? Step two, briefly look for breathing. Step three, if they don't respond, call or send someone to call 911 or the local emergency number right away. Step four, if the person is not breathing or is gasping, prepare to give chest compressions. Kneel beside them and put the heel of one hand on the center of their chest. Place your other hand over that hand, lacing your fingers together. Position your shoulders directly over your hands, keeping your arms straight and your fingers off the chest. Step five, push hard and fast, at least two inches, then let the chest rise completely before pressing down again. Don't take your hands off the chest, just your weight. Step six, keep going. Do not stop compressions until the person shows an obvious sign of life like breathing. The scene becomes unsafe, an automated external defibrillator or AED is ready, you're too exhausted to continue, or a trained responder takes over. Step seven, get training and encourage others to do so by taking an American Red Cross health and safety course. Knowing full CPR, chest compressions and breaths will enable you to help in other emergencies such as drowning and choking. Every household should have at least one person trained in life-saving skills. Did you know? Most people who survive a cardiac emergency are helped by a bystander. To find your local Red Cross chapter, visit redcross.org. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, we just thought it'd be really cool to kind of see that video so you can kind of see what's going on. When Hillary demonstrates on our friend, uh, Breathy Stevie, she's not going to have that straight up and down that you saw the arrow in because she's going to be on this table. We, we, we didn't have a, I don't know, the knees or the whatever to be able to, to do it on the ground for you guys. So we're actually going to have Hillary uh, demonstrate how to do uh, the hands-on CPR with our Breathy Stevie. Great. So the other thing about having a No Breathy Stevie on the table is people don't collapse on a table. People collapse on the floor. So one of the thing is one of the things you need to know is you need to be able to get down and be able to help somebody on the ground. Um, and the first thing is that um, I believe the video showed is a willingness to act. So imagine you're at work or even at a restaurant or at home and somebody collapses in front of you you have to have the confidence to know, and that's why we're doing this hands-only demonstration, that you have the skills to help somebody. Um, some people panic, some people um, run away, and others, we're hoping that if one person in every household is trained in at least hands-only CPR, that we can help save some lives. So as you saw, the important thing is, if somebody collapses in front of you, you check the scene, because let's say they collapsed near a live power line or you know near a railroad track you still have to check the scene you have to make sure you're safe because just like in the airlines when they say put on your own oxygen mask it's not going to do us any good if you then put yourself in danger so you check the scene and you check the person and how do you check the person you're just trying to see if they are breathing or not so you tap them firmly on the shoulder and you say loudly are you okay are you okay? And if they don't respond, you look for signs of breathing. What are signs of breathing? Is the chest going up and down? Um, you can put your ear or your face to their mouth to feel if any breath's coming out. If not, if you feel they are not breathing or they're gasping, which is not breathing, 
if there's somebody else around, point to them and say, Tracy, call 911. Don't just say, somebody call 911 because then either everybody's gonna call 911 or nobody is. So make sure you assign somebody and say, call 911, and if you know you're in a building that has an AED, and get the AED. So Tracy runs out, well, and then you start compressions. And what you're trying to do is get the blood circulating. CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It means you're getting the heart and the lungs to, to start working again, and resuscitation means bringing it back. So again, this is not the best angle, but, and this is a, a training mannequin, which um, has a clicker in it, which helps you find, but you're looking for the, the sternum, and as you saw in the video, you're putting the palm of your hand and you're threading your fingers through it, and then you're going straight up and down, and you're doing it hard. So many people say to me, well, I don't want to hurt them, or I don't want to break a rib. Remember, this person is not breathing. They're gonna die without your intervention. And if they wake up alive and a broken rib, they're gonna only thank you. So you're pushing at least two inches down um, because again, you have to imagine that you've gotta stimulate whatever is not working in that body. So you can hear that click and you keep going. And as the video said, you keep going until you can't go till Tracy comes back with the AED, which you can, I'll demonstrate next, or help arrives because 911 has arrived. You are really a stopgap, and Tracy's statistics show it, and our video said at the end, most, the majority of people who do survive from a car are helped by a bystander, because you are there right then, and even the fastest emergency services might be two or three minutes, and that's too long. So all we're looking to do with the Red Cross is teach people the hands-only CPR so you don't need to worry about being fully trained or learning the, the rescue breaths, which is a different issue and how you put the, the uh, head back and how you breathe in. This is just a simple compressions that you keep going to help people recover, or at least keep going until somebody else comes. So. So I'm doing chest compressions, and I'm working hard on this, and Tracy comes back with the AED. I came back. Good. There you go, Hillary. There, thank you, Tracy. So at least she knew where it was. So most, most people I talk to say, yeah, you know, at work, I know we've got AEDs. I don't know how to use them. The great thing about AEDs, no matter who makes it or manufactures it, is they tell you what to do. So as Tracy said earlier, make sure you know where the AEDs are. And if you know that, you will run out, you'll go get the AED, and you'll bring it in to be used. So this is a demonstration AED. I don't know if you can get it. These are the pads. The pads that go on the body have pictures. This one has an arrow pointing to right above here, and it tells you where to put it. This one says to put it down here. So, There's a big picture of the person's body on the stickers, guys. Yeah. So it tells you exactly below the chest, above the chest. Yep. I mean, so one up here. So you put it on there, and then you press the on-off button. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. And because again, this is electrical source, you step away from it. You make sure nobody's going to touch it. So it tells yeah. me. I said, stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. So press it's a button that is lit up. You press shock that. Delivered. And Almost. then I'll reanalyze the heartbeat. CPR. So it tells me to, re to begin CPR. And it's about two minutes. And I'll keep doing this until either help arrives or after two minutes it's going to say stop CPR and they'll advise another shock or not. But again, you don't need to read any instructions, you need to be able to look at the pictures and press the button and follow the, the prompts. So everybody who's watching this should have confidence that if something should happen and somebody says go get the AED, you'll know what to do. And that's pretty much it. You'll see what, this will take a while and then it'll tell me to start again. That's terrific. 
when I was talking to Hillary offline, guys, um, I made a joke that, I mean, we have three-year-olds that can play video games. Right. And they just, they just turn it on and know what to do. This is the same thing. You just open it up, and it says this is where you put it. These, these, these are like hand controls of yeah. a video game. Yeah. It just tells you, you put one here, you put one here, you press the button, step back. Yeah. Wait, listen, wait, listen. And it says, can we, you know, continue CPR. You continue CPR for two more minutes, and then hopefully it'll come it'll back up, or hopefully we'll ride by that. Say it'll be, yeah, yeah. Uh, analyzing the heartbeat again or whatever. And that is exactly what you are, a stopgap measure until the professionals come. And um, our Red Cross chapter does a hero's breakfast. We've done it. This will be our 17th next April. And there's so many stories um, of people helping people in restaurants or, as you said, in homes. So we've had people like, you know, my husband had a cardiac arrest. And I help. And the first responders who come, they're like, this person never would have survived without somebody intervening. Because they can do great work, but they have to get there. Um, so we have somebody that said hello, Kathy Rondu, R I E N D A E E A U. Mm -hmm. So hello, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you have any comments that you want to talk about the show or the beginning announcements, uh, you can comment and we'll kind of get back to you. Um, we talked about the app, which is terrific. But why do chest compressions help? What is it that? You, so you're stimulating the, the, the blood, the circulation of the blood, and trying to get the heart back started. So again, cardio, heart, pulmonary, lung, resuscitation, and really just picture that you're forcing air, you're forcing circulation throughout the body because everything is just stopped. Oh, I'm plunging the toilet, right? I, I guess so. And there it goes. So, yeah, like, I guess yeah, so, yeah. No. <laughs> no. You're like, yeah, no. Yeah, no that no. one doesn't work, no. but anyway, yeah. Um, so can I be held responsible if the person dies? No. So um, there are good Samaritan laws everywhere. And again, uh, uh, one of the major parts about hands-only CPR is that willingness to act. Just know that you're helping somebody. No matter what you do, you are helping somebody. And um, again, in our Heroes Breakfast, sometimes we are honoring people who came to somebody's aid and helped them and got them got them going until the first responders come and they come to the hospital and three days later they might die. But, you know, uh, every time the family says, but you gave us extra time. Yeah. So um, it's worth it, no matter what. So we have another comment. Susie was on our show. Susie Silva says, great job, Hillary. Thanks, Thank Susie. You. Yeah. <laughs> why aren't you here with me? No, just yeah, she <laughs> said, why aren't you here? <laughs> yeah. um, so what's the youngest age you can perform CPR on? So actually, if you um, download our app, our first aid app, um, pretty much anything past an infant, you can do um, handling chest compressions. But with children, you're going to press down not quite as hard. Now, it kind of cracks me up because <clears throat> they say an adult is two inches and a child is an inch and a half. Like, who's measuring? I don't know. But the main difference is infant CPR is different, and you'll see that even on our app, that an infant you know, under a year or two, you can place on your arm and you're using just the pads of two fingers to press down. In the same spot? Yes, same spot, because you're doing that. But also, you've got, you know, you've got the, you're holding the child's head and you can see their head and their mouth and if they're breathing, but yeah, it's just the pads of two fingers pressing down. But that's the only difference. But if it's anything um, older than an infant and they've collapsed, you can do the chest compressions, just not as hard. Um, how long is the rescue um, breath training? So our classes, we have two different types of classes. Um, one is called blended learning, where you do most of it online, and you're taking tests and quizzes um, based upon what you're learning. And then you come into a Red Cross facility to do the skills version, which an ins instructor will say, OK, they'll have you do this type of demonstration. They'll make sure you have the actual skills. Then there's the full class which is about six hours. So there are a lot of different versions of there's adult CPR AED, there's adult CPR first aid AED, there's adult pediatric CPR first aid AED. So there's a lot of, so that depends how, you know, some people for their, uh, for their job need to have both adult and pediatric. So that would be a slightly longer class. But what they'll do is they'll put together a class that everybody will be doing the adult CPR 
AED, and then the people who need to do pediatric or need to do first aid will stay. So it varies. But you go to redcross.org, click on training and certification, and you can look up all the different classes and different versions. And So Susie asked how about dog and cat CPR. So we did talk about that at the beginning, but you want to? Yeah, so just, we don't teach that in person anymore. It's now just an app, which is great. So it's a free app, American Red Cross um, app, uh, pet first aid. And it will have, which will be great. It's great because it's right in your hand and you can uh, review it. All of our apps not only have the information, but they have quizzes, they have ways to prepare, and the quizzes aren't to stress you out. It's just like, okay, I'm reading this, but let me just check my knowledge. So the Pet, Pet First Aid app is a great one to have on your phone. Is it audio? So if I'm doing it and I'm trying to, trying to save somebody's life, I don't have to like, keep reading it? Is it? No, it's not audio, but that's a good thought. All right, well, write that down. <laughs> write that down, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go Susie, to. Susie, write that down. Yeah, really. <laughs> She's my board member. She'll tell me to get yeah. it done right now. Yeah. That's funny. Um, let's see. So offline, we talked about the Heimlich maneuver, and it's not called the Heimlich right. maneuver anymore. It's called the, the choke saver. Yeah. Um, why don't they call it the Heimlich anymore? Well, it's a, it's a family. It was um, a family that discovered it or created it or whatever, and they decided they don't, really don't want it associated with it, and you know, because um, they want to make sure it's just. It's just how to save somebody from choking and not named after somebody. So it's one of these um, legal things. So I talked about this before, um, probably on the, on the show that we were on, that I had CPR training and first aid at Burger King years ago. Mm -hmm. I was uh, DM for Tennessee Food Shops, and I was at my Central Falls location. And I've always, even, even as I'm a DM, you know, I've always told people where I'm at. I am going to the bathroom. I'm going outside to my car. I'll be right back because... A robbery could happen, a fall could happen, God help me, anything could happen. I always tell people where I'm going. So there's a long hallway to the restroom, and I say, hey, I'm going to the restroom, I'll be right back. Well, on my way back, the assistant manager's running down the, hall, down, down the aisle at me in the convenience store, and then his face is red. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to tell me a joke. This is going to be fun. Now I'm looking as he gets close. I'm like, oh, my God, he's not breathing. Mm. So um, I go, Tony, can you breathe? He's like, you know, shaking his head back and forth. I said, are you choking? He goes... And I go yell in the office like you said. I go, I go, T guys, you know, call 911. Tony's choking to dad. And I said, oh my God. I said, Tony, I hope I do this right. I said, I learned this at Burger King years ago. I'm going to try the high look maneuver on you. Turn around. Turn around, yep. So we turned around and I did like three or four and Trust. his baby comes flying out of his mouth. Unfortunately, through his health care, he lost his teeth years ago. I, again, I, I like to help people in our community. So I buy breakfast or lunch, depending on where I'm mm -hmm. at the day. And I bought everybody breakfast. Well, he rolled the bacon up, and instead of trying to pick it in pieces, he threw it in his mouth, tried to yeah. you know gum it and swallow it, and he was choking to death. Yeah, it's it's and meat is one of the number one things that does it, but it's it's also so called chest thrust because that's all you're doing is you're just pushing it up. Um, scary. But it is. It's scary. Listen, I'm yeah. I'm vegetarian, and I'm I'm probably never going to choke to death now on a piece of meat because it it. It really is, you know, you take too big of a piece or you don't chew it enough, and those are the choke. Or you're trying to swallow pills or whatever. Yep. So, yeah, it is something that, again, you had to have the willingness to act because, you know, there's somebody choking. You ask all the right questions, you know, um, are you choking? And if they can talk, they're not choking. Yep. But he was like, yeah, you know, um, nodding, and that's, that's when you go into action. And you said, call 911, and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, I, I just think it's funny, you know, because sometimes you, you, even if I missed a step, I could have yelled, "Hey, somebody!" You know, when I just yelled right. I mean, it's, it's funny, you know, how I look back at certain things mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, I, I did it right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And he lived. <laughs> those were your instincts, and and some people, we want everybody to be as confident as you were. Like, okay, something bad is happening, and I'm going to help, and I can't do any damage. There's nothing, you know. Let's say you didn't do it right and it didn't yeah. come out, but you're not going to, damn it, you know, again, he can't breathe at that yeah, point. At so. least, at least anybody was coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're doing all that. It, it's <clears> funny <throat> how, how I look back at it. I actually, just how I said it to you, I said every step. I'm like, I'm, I learned it at Burger King. I hope right. I do it right. Turn around. I was like, oh my God, I, I actually did that. I called my DM. I wish I was a DM. I called my regional. I told him I had a really crappy day. Mm -hmm. I was there because someone stole our money. I mean, I just stole the boss. Oh, so yeah. It was a really bad day. I said, I saved Tony's life. I said, I'm done. I'm going home. He goes, all right, have a good day. I was supposed to go to an open house for Tedeschi's at one of my stores, uh, grand opening, mm -hmm. but I had to be here instead. I said, there's a reason I was here today. Was, you know, if I hadn't been there, well, yeah. actually, technically, if I wasn't there, Tony, I wouldn't have bought Tony breakfast. 
But right, still, that's still. You know, but I got home that later that day. So my boss calls me back. I go, so how was your day? Did you find the money? And I go, no, I laughed. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I told you. I said, it was very emotional. I saved Tony's life. <laughs> Dude almost died. I said, yeah. it, took, it took the ambulance took me a little bit to get there. I said, but he had to take his blood pressure medication. He right. was already through the roof. You know? Was, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was very emotional. Yeah, and so that's, that's imagine if one, at least one person in every home or at every workplace had at least the basic training to do that and the confidence to do it. Um, it would save a ton of lives, just like the st statistics you read that um, even though um, some people do still die with bystander intervention, the most people who do survive a cardiac arrest are helped by a bystander. Very rarely is it that they're not helped at all and then the first responders get there because there's just too, too much time. So I think it's, and it's part of a confidence thing, it's overall preparedness for your family, just you said you're a foster parent and you had to take that training. Yep. Boy, I wish every family had to take that training. Anybody with kids in the house or elderly people. You know, if you're a caregiver and you're caring for an elderly person, you should know all these things. Well, like you said, what, 18 point something percent happened right. at nursing homes? Right. 18.2. Right, and that's actually one yeah. of the lower things yeah. because, you know, yep. but um, at home, you know, it's a loved one and, and you know, it's... Being a caregiver means a lot of different things. So whether you're a parent or you're caring for an elderly parent or somebody else in your home, you should and and just be confident about it. It's it's not rockets, it's not brain surgery or rocket science, and there are professionals to come help you. But that is our number one goal. I and mean, preparedness is a big part of the Red Cross. It's not as exciting as, you know, responding to disasters and flying people out to help at the California wildfires or the Hurricane Florence or Michael, but this is the stuff that if you can take the time to get trained or watch that video again or have our emergency apps, you're going to save lives and, um, and you're going to feel confident in, what, in your abilities to do so. You know, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, is just stepping up. When you, when you mm -hmm. see the videos on TV or um, Facebook, that everyone's videotaping it, but no one's <laughs> stopping the fight. Or everyone's videotaping it, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. do something. You do know, something. I'm, I'm the doer. You know, I've always have been a, I'm the protective kind of person, you know, but I'm like, mm -hmm. do something. You know, try something. Say, you know, like you said, be specific. Kevin's in the corner. Kevin, you call 911. Tracy, you know, you go get the AED. You, yeah. you know, and, and then I'll start it. chest compressions, and, and you're just going until the professionals get there. Because if you say call 911, someone's assuming that somebody else is doing it because I'm videotaping it. Right. Right? I'm videoing it, so they're going to call. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to be cool and famous because it's my video that's now out there. Or you're getting f the five people are all calling 911, which is jamming the line, and yeah. they've, they're getting five reports of the same incident, Yeah. which is the other side. So, yeah, you don't want nobody to call, but you don't want everybody to call. And that's just such a simple thing. It's make sure you, And even if you're in a strange place in a restaurant, you don't know any of the people, you're like, you go call 911 and thank God for all the cell phones people have. Nobody has to go find a phone anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, call 911. Yeah, yeah, find where the pay phone is yeah. and then dial it. Quarter. No. Yeah, I know exactly. So, so, yeah, so we don't have any of those issues. So it's really simple and it's just a matter of being community in a neighborhood. So the more education I can bring to all types of community um, and work together. Um, we've, we've done events at people's homes called CPR and cocktails just to make it, you know, fun and interesting but it's a real serious thing to talk about but it's you can make it so it's simple and and you know get your friends around and I'll bring my mannequin. You know I have, I have another story I was just thinking about it uh, when I was training for Tedeschi's as an assistant manager back in the day um, I have an all knowledge from working for 15 years so I had management experience and when the teacher asked her but actually hey Kyle if you ever watch it um, she was one of the trainers I would kind of wait and see if anybody else is going to answer first because I knew some of the questions or some of the answers. And I just kind of wait back and I'm like, so I would do some answering and then I would do some more answering and I'm waiting around and nobody knows the answer, so I do some more answering. But now at lunch, and one of my friends, Henry, that I met, um, he goes, Tracy, he goes, you, you always know the answers. You know, I said, listen, I have prior training and a lot of knowledge I can use going forward. Mm -hmm. We're eating lunch and he starts choking on a piece of chicken. And I said, Henry, I'm sorry, I can't use that knowledge. I learned that in, in, in a past job. Oh, he laughed so high, like, the chicken came out of his mouth. There you go. He, he lodged it himself. He right, goes, yeah. He goes, I just learned a valuable lesson. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, you know, I, I think I, I love doing these shows. And I know this is an LGBT, it's called the LGBTQ Voice. I mm -hmm. think it's important to talk about um, things for the entire community. And I say that one in ten people are gay, so 
you might be able to help that gay person, you know what I mean? But I'm not looking to, I always have, you know, an, an LGBTQ topic on each show, but that's our, our main goal. Right, but the know. thing is, and that's why I talk about it in community groups and stuff, yeah. so if they're, you know, if we can get the LGBTQ community together to, to say, you know, we're going to make sure we're as prepared as possible, can help each other, yeah. um, that's a great thing. And because it just starts with one family or one office or whatever, um, you know, for people who own businesses, so Burger King and, and Tedeschi's trained you um, because, but, but the smaller ones, I mean, gosh, you know, if you're a small st store owner and somebody walks in your store and collapses or whatever, um, yeah, I just, it, it starts, it's community-based and it's individual-based and family-based, so that's why I love, I think it's great to be on this show and talk about this specific community because to take, to take care of each other. It's tough. I, I had one of the stores in Fall River and uh, there was a stabbing out in front of the store. And one of the employees went and just grabbed a whole bunch of paper towels and put it on the person. Mm -hmm. And now she, um, she got, had to get tested for HIV and she had to um, go get pills like once a month, whatever mm -hmm. that, she, that she had to do. But she didn't, she just said, I need to grab something. And, I, and she went. Yeah. You know, there's some people that can do that and there's some other people that can't. Yeah. You know? and, and there are, we have, um, I, one of the things that the video shows is, you know, if, if you have rubber gloves, you might be like, I don't carry rubber gloves around, but we've got a little keychain thing that has, you know, folded up rubber gloves I and stuff. Like some of those. Yeah. How do we get those? Well, you can go on to redcross.org and order them on our store and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because I mean, can you imagine just have that on your keychain? Yeah. Mean, what about um, the gloves? Yes, but what about like a mouthpiece? Like if something that is that in the keychain form too? Yeah, you can get that too. So yeah, yeah. because it's got the the. The mouth like a guard, app? yeah, it's a, a mouth guard and stuff. But yeah, so um, that is part of it, um, you know, keeping yourself safe too. But again, I th I think there I can't even come up with many people who are hurt by helping somebody. Yeah. So. I keep gloves on my car for my for my job, working with uh, people with disabilities and whatnot, and not sure where we're going, people's homes and stuff. I always keep a, a box in my car and I have some in my right. in my bag. Um, so if something ever happened, I was on the road. If, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would say, "Oh, let me get my gloves." I, that's not me. Yeah, right. I, I think I would be that person to kind of jump in, but. Um, but think of it as I, I keep, sorry. There's something vibrating in the I know there's, now. It's like, not me. <laughs> something's flying by. But also the gloves can help the, the other person, you know, you don't yeah. get your, your germs or whatever. Yeah, so, right but now I have a cold, sorry guys. Yeah, exactly, so hey, maybe you do one. Do you mind, you might get a cold. Right, yeah. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry, you're not even answering me, so it doesn't matter. Right yeah, now. exactly. Sorry, so. Stevie. <laughs> yeah, It's okay. kind of funny out there. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see. Are there any situations that CPR will do more harm than good? Yeah, I can't think of any, and I'm not, you know, a fully professional uh, trainer, but again... And why aren't you? Because I feel... Have you been under my hands and knees that long? Yeah, no, no, we're just, it's just, it's one of the few things I've been certified in. I mean, the Red Cross is a lot of different things, and I'm the executive director, and I do a little bit of everything, yeah. but, um, and yeah, I have taken, I have taken, I'm certified, um, I have, you know, every two years I get my certification, but I'm not an instructor, yeah. um, which is a whole different level. Um, but you're not going to hurt anybody. We were talking about this earlier. That so one of the reasons you stop doing uh, compressions is because they can breathe, and they're like, "Okay, I'm all right." If they're talking to you just like somebody who's choking, they're okay. Yeah. Um, if they can't talk to you or respond, you're not going to do any harm, even if you break a rib or two. But you help them breathe again. People. Yes, I think my biggest thing is I, I know I'm supposed to go down two inches, but I have a friend, Gilda, and I love her to death. She's 94, and she's so frail. Mm -hmm. I think if I went down, I would just squish her to death. I would just, like, break everything. You know? Right, it's right. For, me, for people that are older. I know we, we said about the 18% mm -hmm. that happen in a nursing home. I think maybe I'd have to maybe go to a nursing home more and maybe do some visits and kind of see... Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think I, that's my only fear for me. You know, besides the baby one, I kind of go, well, I, I, the baby ain't going to yeah. cry anyway, so I'm not going to hear, you know, I'm not going to break Yeah, her, yeah, you know? right. But the, the, she's so frail. Somebody hugged her once and broke her ribs. Right, so right, exactly. You know? But again, yeah, so again, if she's not breathing, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you can also do a feel. You know, this is a nice, sturdy, yeah. you know, young mannequin yeah. that there's a click there, and, and but I think you're right. You, you can certainly tell. But again, you also can feel that you're literally pushing blood circulation and breath, in, you know, getting things going. So yeah. if it's a 94-year-old, I don't have specific advice on 
age than the other Be end. Be careful. Let's keep pushing. Right. And yeah. again, remember, even if you break some of her ribs, but yeah. she survives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's... Help. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, can CPR bring someone back from cardiac arrest? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know. Kevin's covered up some of these great questions for us. Yeah, because he's been through the, yeah. the training, too, which is interesting. Yeah. So again, it's cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So yeah. you're trying to get the heart started and the lungs started and the blood circulating. And, and um, that's, what, that's what gets going again. But yeah. So we talked um, offline that the Fall River office is closed. So you have C um, CPR and first aid training in Hyannis and Brockton? Yeah. Um, so we teach it at Stonehill College in Northeastern, and also Fisher College's Brockton campus, and then our Hyannis office. And um, there are also authorized providers who are people who are trained by the Red Cross and offer their own classes, or they work or they're at a big company and they get trained and then they do the classes there. So sometimes there are classes at your workplace or um, somewhere else. And the YMCA's usually do Red Cross training too. Now, I know we didn't, I probably should have asked this offline. How much does it, um, AED cost somebody, like a company, a business? To but purchase one? Yeah. They're all different. I, you know, there's so many different companies and I really don't know. And we had to get one for our chapter house about three or four years that. ago. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you can go online and find it. You can buy them from the Red Cross, but they're also all different companies. Um, uh, but it's certainly worth it. So could I carry that in my car? What's like, do I get one for home? I mean, what, what do I... Yeah, there's not, there's not a car version of it because yeah. most of them are bigger than this and on the walls, and you could have one yeah. at home. Um, but again, your first responders or your... Uh, EMTs or whatever will bring an AED with them. It's usually in the big, um, everything from golf courses to restaurants to companies where you'll say, um, I belong to a golf club and, and on the cart has, you know, where the AEDs are, oh, you know, yeah, um, but you have to get to them. And again, every time I talk about that, they're like, but I don't know how to use it. And if that is the one thing we can but I overcome. But analogy, do you know how to use a video game? Yeah, I but, mean, well, actually, somebody my age, I'd be like, I don't know how, I don't know the rules of that text. game. She's 94. She okay. texts. She's better than me. Yeah. I text, but a video, so I don't want people to think that they need to yeah. learn the rules or whatever. Just get it out of there. Open it up. I mean, the pitches, it's, there's pitches. It's yeah. Not, it's not, it doesn't yeah. even say under left breast or under, above No, left, you know? yeah, so it's not even a language barrier, yeah. except, you know. Except for that. What'd you say, Kevin? You follow there you yes. go, yeah. Do you bake? Do you cook? Is can it, you follow instructions? Yeah, can you follow instructions? Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate that. I can say something sexist, like if you're a woman, we know you'll follow the instructions, but not sure if you're a guy, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wait, <laughs> so just... any more comments on that one? <laughs> no, I know exactly. Oh, sorry, guys. But um, yeah, so it is. And, and again, um, I think that's one of the saddest things where people are like, well, yeah, but I don't know what to do or whatever. And would you rather watch somebody you know, just collapse and not know what to do. So you guys come on the show, you've been on here twice, so mm -hmm. let's just say that I own Joe Schmo's, you know, bowling alley, and I have, you know, 30 employees that work for right. me. Would you, would you guys come and do these demonstrations, things like that, with people's mom and pops or big business? Yes, yeah. So we, um, in, in addition to the authorized providers, we have instructors that go to do the group. So a company calls us, we say, great, we set it up, we charge them X, Y, and Z, so it's less to... Um, and then we do the class for them at their place of work or whatever. Um, these type of demonstrations I'll do all day long to as many people as I can. Um, when somebody says, oh, come to the New Bedford Health Fair. Great. I want to do hands-only CPR demonstrations. So do you have a name for him or now you're going to keep No, I, so I didn't know about No, no so Breathy Stevie. Stevie. But so Breathy Stevie is from what? No Bob's Breathy Stevie. Bob's Burgers. No breathy oh, no Stevie. Breathing yeah, it's not breathing because yeah, he's no not breathing, Stevie. right? Is it yeah. no breathy Stevie? Yeah. God, no. So Bob's what? Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. I haven't seen that one. Is it a cartoon? It's like Family Guy and Simpsons. Family Guy Simpsons. Oh, okay. See, I thought you got like. What? More like The Office. More like The Office. A A AJ's putting his two cents in. What do you got, AJ? The Office. The Office. Definitely. Yeah. He's like, AJ said, uh, definitely the office. Um, we were on the show last time, we were talking about, um, 
emergency situation, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. KDC actually is the, the program I use my foster care, and they actually came on, Red Cross came a couple weeks later, and they were talking about everything that you talked about, da, 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 they gave us three uh, fire extinguishers. Right, fire yes, the smoke alarms, fire, yeah. Smoke alarms, thank you. And I, I, I knew all the things they were saying, because we, we were just on the show. Right. And I said, oh, we just had somebody on our show. I like, oh, I knew I recognize you. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the thing is that um, just like our home fire campaign, it's all about, yes, we'll come and install free smoke alarms if you need some or see it. But the other part of that is sitting down with the family and saying, so, you know, you know where your smoke alarms are and you know how to test them. And, if, you know, if they're beeping, don't just take the batteries out. Um, but what do you, you know, we talked about with your family and stuff. So you've got... Kids, you've got whatever. Does everybody know what to do if, if a fire starts? Where are the exits? How do you get out? If you're on the second floor or whatever. Um, and you have to have those conversations. And they're not something you think of on a bright, sunny day like, yippee, we're having a picnic. Yeah. It might be, hey, what do we do if we have a fire? And having home fire drills. So that's, that's the thing. And that's the most important part when our volunteers go into somebody's home and we chat. But it's like, hey. And then we give you a little card to map out your uh, exits. and. Yeah. But most people don't talk about it, and they think, oh, well, we'll be fine. Same as this. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. This, it'll never happen to me. Right, and this is helping somebody else. Yeah. And the home fire campaign is about, you know, taking care of your family. And so is this, too, I mean, yeah. if, if somebody. But um, it, it is interesting. It has nothing to do with income or anything. It has to do with making sure that you know about your home and your family, and everybody has, knows the plan. It, it just amazes me uh, with the technology we have and, you know, the statistics, 47%, you know, people just need to step up and, and try. Yep. You know, I don't even know what time it is. I think we'll leave it at, what time is it, hon? <laughs> I know. Let me tell. I know. 747. 747, not doing too bad. Yeah. Um, I, I know next week's show is where we actually have on, on homelessness, so I want to kind of make sure that you guys um, know for next week. It's going to be on homelessness. We're hoping to have the Women's Center. Um, and I reached out to a couple of other organizations, and one I'll talk about probably next week. I was just disappointed that there's a homeless center, and I asked them to be on the show, and they said no thanks. Oh, and interesting. It could be because we're LGBTQ voice, um, but I, I was you know taken back hmm. by that. Um, no That's thanks. surprising. I, yeah, I was very, very surprised. Not, hey, you know what, I'm busy, I can't make it. Maybe another day, just no thanks. I actually called the organization. Mm -hmm. Left them my information. Hey, I'm tracing on the LGBTQ voice. We do such and such a shows. Would you guys like to come on? I never heard back. So I sent a private message on Facebook because on Facebook, you know, if someone reads it because it drops the face drops down. Yeah. So that's how I do a lot. So that's how I get so many people that I can. That's how I believe I'm at the Red Cross. Um, that's why I get a lot of people on our show. That's I know they read it. Mm -hmm. And but after that, and he said no thanks. I was like, wow. And um, it, it's you know it's disappointing. So if you guys have shows you want us to talk about, uh, excuse me topics on our show. If you want to be on the show, um, you can email, uh, well, for sponsorship, leo at thebedforguide.com. AJ, do you still have that available? Thank you so much. AJ's putting it up. I know the last sentence is wrong, the $100 one. It's a 30 second to a one minute segment. I think I put seven minutes to 10. I was cut and pasted incorrectly. But we have different sponsorship levels because all the money and funds, 50% of it stays here with the show. Um, excuse me, the Bedford Guide, we're paying for the technician, we're paying for their, all the audience, um, if you want to call it that. Um, all the camera work, um, a platform that we have is amazing, and 50% of the proceeds actually goes to the LGBTQ network. And as you guys know, we took over um, New Bedford Pride, called South, it's now called South Coast Pride. We have Pride Cafe on Monday nights from 5 to 7, and prior to that is yoga. Yoga is free, ages 14 and up. Pride Cafe on Mondays is the 18 plus group. Uh, Tuesdays we're here, hey! Um, Wednesdays we'll be starting our tutoring back up with David um, in the afternoon for NB Agley, ages 14 to 24. And then on Wednesday nights we have the Rainbow Club, and it's the 8 to 13 group. So the kids come with their parents and um, talk about maybe resources, play some games, some drawings, just to have a, a place to go. And if you're queer and questioning, if you're LGBTQ, anything under that umbrella, um, just go. Eileen um, runs the program. Eileen is our um, co-producer and co-host of the show, and she is our network coordinator, and she runs um, the Rainbow Club on Wednesdays. Thursdays, we have our NBA Agley group, and that's the Bedford Alliance of Gay and Lesbian Youth, which ages 14 to 24. 
there's a closed group. If you ever wanted to be a guest, um, the kids actually have to vote on it. It's um, youth-driven, peer-led with adult support. On Friday nights, we have First Fridays. Kevin and uh, Mariah are our peer leaders, and they um, kind of hang out with the youth, and it's out without adult support, and it's called First Friday, so the first Friday of every month, they're there. We have no programs right now on Saturdays, and Sundays uh, mornings we have sober and out. So um, if you're LGBTQ, even if you're straight, uh, every sober uh, program, you're invited to be in. Doesn't matter who you are, but it's just called sober and out because we're, hey, it's called, I call it gay, hey, hey. Uh, so I want to make sure that you guys know that. 50% of the proceeds go to the programming that we do and future programs that we want to do. Um, and we'll be sending out sponsorship and whatnot for Pride. Uh, we're actually getting pretty early with that. Uh, we actually did it like after last Pride so we can do the mailings out because a lot of corporations and whatnot um, do their sponsorship early in the year. So if you guys have a business organization, it doesn't have to be yours. It could be, you know, your boss's place. So you know what, listen, now Pride's coming up. There's, there's this great show. Would you like to put a, an ad on? Um, just you know, hit up Leo, Leo at thebedforguy.com for the show, um, Tracy and um, Eileen um, for sponsorship for Pride, or anything about the show that you want us to talk about. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a ladies' night. What's going on in the LGBTQ, you know, for the, for the ladies out there, or, or the uh, lesbians? Um, then a few weeks after that, we're going to be having some guys on the show. Just talking about what's going on in the community. How do the men feel about being gay in the community today? And I'm actually going to have some elders and what it was like for them years ago. And then we did a show, and we had youth and uh, seniors. We're actually going to kind of change it up and have younger women and older women, and we're going to have younger men and, and older men. Um, and kind of get different perspectives, you know, talk about why are there no lesbian bars, where'd they all go, um, things like that. So, um, I know we're going to cut a little bit early tonight, which is probably good because I'm not feeling that well. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to, to uh, the conversation I started the show off that I was so thrilled today to have lunch with David and Bob. David was one of the Stonewall survivors uh, for the veterans, and um, we're going to be doing something around our pride. Uh, so our Pride is June 1st, so look for more information on that. And um, I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye now.